the G. And that makes you wonder what RNG do, because you'd expect the Renata to come out alongside it for IG side, just because one of the, the tried and true duos being able to deny engage while also finding uh, pretty much any target that you do want. RNG gonna have to be able to answer that. We, we, we've seen some shenanigans come out into the Karma Renata, assuming that's what gets picked through. I think it was, was it TS on day one, bringing out the Soraka to his pair? <laughs> curious uh i i this combo is just so deadly yeah uh, and, and very curious to see how a very aggressive bot lane and on and wink are going to be able to pilot that one uh do see some head shaking of yskm maybe saying give me the Cassante daddy uh as he will be looking to at least have that big difference making moment in the top side of the map and he will be taking that one so a lot left in the the play court i feel like a breathe here yeah, and I, but I do gotta say, I feel like IT's first three picks together just look so solid. Like you said, the the strength of the Callista Renata able to come out now with Cassante. You don't have to worry about Bree just taking all of your plates willy nilly. But now, Aatrox going to come out for the side of Bree. So now we're gonna have the strong presence up against you know a potentially short range of Callista. But I mean, Callista does have you know some nice ability playing up into the Renata as well with her ult. Can very easily shut a champion like Aatrox down. Only thing is the lack of range. Uh, I feel like you're going to have a lot of range of engage, especially with the Varus as the answer in, into the Callista. And it's just all about how on is positioning. And we've seen some question marks there occasionally. I'm not going to throw him under the bus fully, but maybe partly as the Talia does get locked in away here, at least from RNG. I do see a heavy prevalence in the second phase bans for RNG so far today. Yeah, really. Uh... It's at this point, really just trying to lock out mid. A bit, a bit strange. It's been the Talia. <laughs> he just really doesn't want to play the, again, you know, against, against the Talia. Yeah, now also IG banning off the LeBlanc. So clearly saying that, that they could see the Nico being flexed down to that support role, which would be interesting. I mean, with, with RNG, you really never know. I mean, able to put out anything. Things like the Azir still on the table. I think that would be fine uh, if we do see cry and just have to default back to that it's probably his most comfortable champion too he's five and zero on it right now in the split yeah it would do well to shut out things like tang yuan assuming it's tang yuan and Nico from being able to find access to the, to the back line as well as breathe also uh shout out to something you raised out earlier why is cam having taken his first loss on Cassante in game number one uh what's that revenge arc here he wants to make sure to you know if he's gonna take a loss he gets a win as the akali does get locked away yeah, now it makes you wonder, because if RNG do decide to just flex this Nico down, if they did want to maybe try and take away something like an Azir for themselves, or if they do just pick a more conventional champion down in support, but it seems like they're reading into, hey, getting way, getting way on the Vi and preventing that from going uh, to Tianjin when you're playing Avaris uh, is something that RNG do not want to have to see this game. I think it just helps solidify a lot of the RNG potential in this game. It is going to be all about locking down on if they can get big backline access. I mean, he's just going to melt there with the short range that he has. He'll be in bad positions a lot of the time as well. I think getting some peel back abilities for IG is important. I think uh, this combo, but first and foremost, the rel is going to be a nice unlocking factor there. Yeah, and like I said, I feel like Azir would just fit with what IG have already picked up so well. I think the prior mid lane bans come out from RNG was just more to do with, you know, things like the Oriana Nocturne that could potentially come out and get onto Avaris Talia just with the Weaver's Wall in general. This being the next go-to option. Now RNG gonna have to reveal their hand with exactly what they're doing with the Sneeko. Like I said, uh, in terms of conventional supports, I can't really think of anything that would, that would work too well unless Ming was willing to kind of branch out like we saw Mako doing on day one you always could just go hey we have Ming go more of a tank support route we saw him fought Leona earlier on it wouldn't be good in the matchup it wouldn't make a lot of sense Let's but there go. we go that is the middle ground bringing out the Blitzcrank still gonna be able to look for those engages and just take Renata out from a point where she can really impact and deny you with that ulti something that was banned away in the first game as well it was a potential option there for IG but uh, now we do get the Ming Blitzcrank and doesn't matter what happens in lane, it feels like, especially with Ming at the helm of the Blitzcrank. You land one hook onto this any squishy member of IG, it's gonna be pretty nice for RNG in terms of trying to find good team fights after that. I'm also just 
happy to see him bring it out. Ming has been play Ming has almost played a different champion like every game of the split so far. <laughs> but still, I mean, again, like we saw in game one, right? Ming still to me always feels like that guy who will default back to some like engage heavy champions uh, that might have disadvantage lane disadvantageous laning phases. But now with the Blitzcrank having the opportunity there, a ton of pick potential on RG side. But IG spy B5 is terrifying. Yeah, it really is. And I think, it, again, it's all about spacing, but that makes it even more terrifying. So trying to find ways to weave themselves into these fights, getting wise cam in a confident position to be a force on this Cassante is oh so important. But you also got to remember, this is the last game that we're going to see of either of these teams for the next two weeks. Chinese New Year is on the horizon. The Spring Gala is in full force. And IG and RNG are going the distance. We wouldn't have it any other way here to go through our week number three. And we got to see who's going to come away. Is it IG to put themselves at the top of the table at four and one? Or is it RNG to even things out and get that circle going for LPL? Let's hear those Jios ring one last time for our first series of the night. <laughs> The early ward there does a lot of work. Okay, so giving away their position. RG doing an interesting wrap around way. Maybe just gonna try and get some vision, but does he end up That'd getting really caught terrifying. from this? Okay, luckily he doesn't. You go so deep that you're, the enemy team would never expect you to be there. It's like you started on their side of the map. That's what it is. What if for whatever reason, you know, one of the bot laners would have recalled and just Yo, decided to walk away? He's by himself here. <laughs> like, I, Tanya does not win that level one. I mean, and Wei's going to be able to pick a timing where if he was on one of these camps, right, he gets to come in and potentially just steal it right from out from under his nose and he'll, he'll be lower oh HP. Oh my god. He's got the mind games going. He waited the whole time and now he can start his red side. I mean, one thing we could say so far about both games, right, is that Wei had the superior early game both times getting in Tianjin's way. Now though, <laughs> Observers bring us back to the lane that really matters. Oh, <laughs> they were waiting fine. the whole time. Oh my God, Wink is half held now. Uh, and oh, Wei has wait, gone for a level two. God, this is so know. good from RNG. They have no idea. They have literally no idea. Ignite comes down. I think IG is starting to get a handle on the situation here. They're going to go for the guaranteed first blood, and they're going to give it over to Wei. A beautiful rocket grab gets on back and burns his flash. Ming with two grabs in the first two minutes of the game. I love no hesitation about just throwing it blindly into the brush, being like, hey, we know they're not here. We know they're not leashing for their jungler because of where our jungler is. And they just start that off. So now once again... RNG with, with with control in the early game, right? We see pressure and mid, pressure and top, and pressure and bot. And these kind of spicy fight early, see if you can feel out your opponent bot lanes is back to the LPL that I know and love, right? We've had, we did have a little while there when teams were trying to figure out the meta where things were extremely slow. I'm sorry you had to go through that lyric. I've been blessed with extremely chaotic series every time. Uh, and I think we're starting to see a lot more confidence that we talked like earlier uh, earlier in the day where we were talking about the level ones, but just in general, a lot more confidence. And we're seeing that now with LWX and Ming, which is a nice sight to behold, I feel like. Yeah, and also to kind of bring it back, because, you know, you kind of mentioned like teams being willing to, to go for like spicier picks, fighting more, all of this. Uh, I also feel like it's an interesting split where you can look at all the drafts in LPL right now and there's no like there isn't necessarily like a hey you do this every time or if there was we'd see we'd see Maokai every game and we'd see Cassante <laughs> picks before we do, you know you know what I mean it feels yeah. like some teams very much have their own priorities and that that draft so they can be very different from series to series that's why I love we have Ming and Wink going against each other. Two guys who have just been picking all kinds of sort of craziness and bot lane both their lists extremely long already at the start of the split. Uh, we do see a little hover up from bot side from IG. They have Tianjin down here, so feeling pretty confident. Uh, we're actually looking to try to catch Ming out in transition there, but don't find it. I gotta be more afraid of IG if just Ming throwing out another hook, you know, blindly into a brush where he knows <laughs> IG are waiting around if he does end up finding it. Nothing going to come from this now, so IG just going to make sure that Tianjin is able to pick up the Scuttle. But RNG, I think, completely fine with the state of affairs of the map. Yeah, I mean, you got the early push down bottom side. You had the early invade by way as well. A nice little response here by Tianjin. 
who's looking bot side. He's just going to get that back off. He's really dicey to try to go for a dive against this combo. I do kind of want to bring us a bit bigger picture, though, and say, like, if IG do manage to pull this out, ending 4-1, and one, like, by Dude. week 3 is, is crazy. And sure, they haven't, like, found any big wins off of any, like, star-studded favorites just yet. They did end up going down to NIP, who, again, most people have in that top 6 range. But they are quickly setting themselves apart from a lot of the other teams that, that we have in contention for, you know, the, the middle of the pack, who, who are going to be fighting for those slots. So I think this yeah. would be huge if IG do manage to pull it out. And let's be real, NIP had the rookie versus the organization buff, so like uh, you can't, you could just count that one out. Wait, uh, so, <laughs> so really was. what about what about what about crying and crying and wake here? Don't about worry about it. Don't worry, but that's different. All right, won a world championship. Sure, they're not rookie. <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry, just they're just not. <laughs> Uh, I, I do expect, though, it, with the way that the season has started out, it, it's reminded me a lot of IG Spring last year, right? But the question is sustainability and, and con at least consistency for this roster. And I think that's a lot of the same conversation we've had for RNG. Because, yes, we've seen Wei and Ming reunited again, but it's been about getting Tong Yuen and LWX involved. Breathe having some strength from the top side, and that's not always been the case this year. No, no, again, we really haven't been seeing it. We, we've already had it in the, the past two games, but a lot of it really has fallen down to kind of LWX and Ming early on. Ming, I feel like, has looked the better of the two and has had some, like, great plays already. But, uh, you know, he, he took a split off, for no doesn't remember. Didn't start at the beginning of spring last year. Came in halfway through the split, and then by summer uh, was already gone once, once more. Yeah. It's uh, kind of a weird timeline. <laughs> it really is. <laughs> But hey, he's here with LWX, also on a new team. Uh, once a nice long-standing FPX member. Was the last standing bastion of the uh, the FPX World Championship on the roster. Uh, but that that time has flown the coop for the Phoenixes. Uh, we do have IG, though, trying to get some warding around the grubbies up here. But it's actually way he was on position first. And this just feels like what, what always happens, right? It, it, it feels like most times, once you get to game threes, those are like the most tempered games of the <laughs> series. Unless it's a completely one-sided series, but that ain't, hap that ain't happening here. Both these teams feeling very evenly matched. I can understand why, especially for IG, they're a bit more comfortable with, with taking things at a tempered pace, trying to get this Azir to a point where it can be strong. Oh, that was oh. great. He's trying to, at least. Yeah, so close. I thought he had it. So, really, no big focus towards the, the grubs at all. I mean, they've been up two minutes. Usually, we see teams immediately try to position around there. With the redeploy, Wei is immediately heading bot side of the map. I think for RNG, it makes a bit more sense. You have the split screen trying to lean around it, looking for those opportunities to, to utilize it. Tianjin, it seems like for the same reason, maybe feeling like he should be around here. But all of his camps are going to be up on top side soon, so it makes sense for him to make his way up there and try and find something. Both of his laners getting pushed in right now, though. Wei is going to look for a return gank here on bottom side. He is terrifying with Ming right there behind him. Oh, no. Um, yes. has ult. Good job. Good job. Good job, on. Yeah, go Ghost. Let's go. It's not Tanny Phantom, though, I promise. It's just on for IG. Oh, even oh. Tong Yuen's coming to wrap around. Oh. Nice little hop, skip, and a jump. Yeah, Tong Yuen being here is also just terrifying. Oh, Wake gets just full on engaged on. Gets the Fates call out. That'll be a double engage if he wants to go back in. Tianjin has made his rounds down here. And IG will survive, at least for the time being. So IG end up losing an Ignite for an Ignite that was given. Ming obviously used Flash. And a wave completely lost in mid that Crying pushed in. So, a lot going in favor of IG with, with the amount of time that RNG wasted trying to make that play possible. Yo, the boots of swiftness tech for, uh, for Ming on the Blitzcrank. No more slowdowns. <laughs> Being nope. able to speed around, too, is actually pretty huge. And now we can see making his way towards the mid lane for now with Tang Yuen. Uh, you know, I, I'd assume that IG would know that that it isn't him with the Varus down there just yet. Maybe they could think <laughs> so because Grub's still being on the board. But like you said, neither team has made any mind to that just at yet. All. We're getting to the point where we're not going to get a second spawn. You're right. It's just not even <laughs> both teams just being too caught up in just what's no happening here, bots. They they, they watch too many episodes of the Telegrubbies. You know, I I think it's fine. 
we don't need drops coming into this series. All we need is some more patented Blitzcrank hooks landed. Uh, or at well, least, they didn't you know, land that. Yeah, I was going to say, maybe we, maybe we can also go farm our topside camps, but then a little bit, like, <laughs> things might look a little different. The... Yeah, you don't the know. The chicken nuggies are a little stale at this point. They're, uh, they've been under the, the heat lamp for a little too long. Although, I feel like there is a level of, like, heat lamp chicken nuggies that, like, is good because they get crispier. I don't know what you think. Is it, is it good to let your chicken nuggies cook? You know, chicken nuggies being raptors? <laughs> yeah, probably not. Probably not. I'm not, I'm not a big fan of, of anything cooking for too long. Which is weird because I'm also, you know, never mind. Now, this is not the rabbit hole we go down. <laughs> I've been criticized on my palate enough in the League of Legends universe. Uh, rightfully so. R rightfully, rightfully so. <laughs> rightfully so. I still remember when I compared like a Michelin star restaurant I went to with Dash and other casters to Popeyes. And you know what? Popeyes <laughs> is great. Popeyes is great. Don't disrespect no Popeyes. I'm uh, just gonna leave that one there, and uh, you know we're just gonna walk Dra away from Dragon, that one. Dra Dragon's coming up, Mizell. We got. Yeah, we, we have an out. We have an easy out, easily done. Uh, Subner Swift, thank you. Uh, as now we get IG positioning around here, they are gonna try to get some movement of the vision at least. But Way is gonna be getting the scuttle crab first. We're gonna try and bring it back, but Brian has Empress Divide. Way gonna have to use this vault breaker out. This should be repositioning from RNG because they're just trying to look for a pick. Right, and this is what the comp needs to hope for. Ming has an angle, but not going to commit anything to it. RNG just oh really only playing for a, uh, the possibility of a hook landing. It seems like they aren't all that confident in the fight breaking out otherwise. And we hit it, right? Just team fighting directly into IG's comp is going to be really hard. Like, Wink will just be able to shut you down. You have On who could bring Wink to safety. You have this tanky rel coming through. Oh! He caught away, knowing that he didn't have a way out. He will end up burning his flash there to get out. Crying was looking for the angle. Crying and Wink both used flash there. So this actually looks like it's going to give RNG. Yeah, it's going to give RNG all the opportunity to get the dragon after the play doesn't work out and only a flash flash ult from Way being lost. That's actually pretty big. Uh, and they, again, that dragon going over pretty nice as the dragon stacking is there. We are officially to the point where we aren't going to get that second grub spawn. And I'll say, LPL keeps giving me new moments. I, I don't think I've seen a single game this split, at least that I've casted, that a single grub hasn't been taken. So uh, new, you learn something new every day. And we're going to move forward in the game now and see if that focus around the Rift Herald does become a priority. Okay, another plate going over to Ming and LWX. I like that Ming still constantly even just threaten that hook even right under turret itself. But both teams still just being so tempered, waiting for first items to be finished. We do have Nashers on to Kryon. So now I'm going to start being in a place where he can put out a little bit more damage, but definitely feels like we're waiting on the ones, specifically for RNG side, when we are once again going to the Lethality Vars, when we have the Nico and those first items really being what cements the burst to be able to come through. LWX might have his now ghost blade is in pocket nice yeah, a bit more, a bit more punch. on the way a little bit more punch at least you got the natural two for sustained damage on the other side brian oh he's gonna start him the grubbies are not left alone you'll only get three of them but no it's better than nothing the, the important part is that they're getting some love that's all that we really care for. <laughs> all creatures on the Rift Truly. deserve to be loved and respected. Remember Who's that. Who's your That's... favorite creature? Um, I think mine's the duck. Sir McQuackingston. I miss, uh, I don't know if they count as creatures, but the pillars that you would take in um, Dominion. Those are my favorite League I'm of Legends creatures. I'm talking about Summoner's Rift. This is just me trying to push for Dominion to be brought back. Let me do my thing. Mine's between the deer in the bottom right corner of the map sometimes, or or the duck. There's also a cute frog, and I think it was just right there on the screen uh, for a second. But, uh, I think you know, I, I actually got my answer. My favorite creature on Summoner's Rift is VLG anytime that they're playing. Because <laughs> they're just they, they're just monsters. <laughs> they're, they're terrified. Like, oh. They're terrified. Yeah, they are looking like the big bag dogs of the LPL. It feels like it had been a long time coming too, or at least a long build up to it. 
other people representing and BLG always being knocked down. But, uh, I'm going to be are. tentative on it just because it's like, okay, we had the JDG roster last year. That didn't work <laughs> out. I'm not going to get my hopes up twice. Oh, find some hopes. He got him. That's the combo. He got the bailout, though. That's actually pretty big. About a lot of time there. But Wei will end up getting traded right back. He'll be the one for one. Both junglers going down. Still, I mean, Wing throwing out his ult at the end there does present some opportunities if Ming was able to find another hook, but looks like he won't be able to do so in the end. Profane Hydra now picked up for Breathe up against the Ice Form Gauntlet for Wyatt Scam. So Breathe is going to be in a point where he can really start to impact these team fights. But I don't even know if we'll get to a point where we're really seeing these 5v5s, right? RNG have been very much yeah. staying away from those and really just relying on the Blitzcrank. I guess the question is, how many times can IG get caught like that until they start paying attention to the at least distance that they're giving themselves away from Ming? Because this is literally what RNG are going to be trying to do over and And even just some of these angles, right? Because that, I mean, even before the terrain changes, even still now, like, it's just a very common angle to look for those hooks over. Yeah. So I feel like especially ones like those, like, you just can't be getting caught by as IG still. I mean, they're going to get to a point where it's going to be really hard to take down their front line. Sante and Rel will get huge. I like that RNG are trying to take advantage of this spike where they are a little bit stronger. And RNG going to go ahead and take the Rift Herald here so they can actually try to push this a little bit back their way, uh, at least in, in the 1,000 gold lead that they do have. But the question is, where do you try? Like, right now, it looks like it's got to be mid lane. LWX is here. The kill pressure from IG's bottom lane now moving to mid lane is actually pretty big, though. Yeah, they're going to have to respect it a lot. On has not been afraid to hop forward. He hops forward menacingly, folks. Trust me. Menacing. Uh, you, how do you hop menacingly? You just, you just, you just look at On. He just, he just oh, you does do it. it like Callista, where it's yeah, like kind of crouched over, like kind of yeah, weird looking. Yeah, yeah exactly. It just, it just kind of spooks you out a little bit and scares you off. So what RNG need to do is they need to overcome that fear. They need to reach deep inside their hearts. And mm -hmm. guess what? You probably do have to overload mid regardless. I, I feel like looking for a Herald play on sides won't really mean too much for RNG. With the fact that all towers are open, like, the opportunity is there. Give you deep push. Let you maybe, like, rotate onto a dragon first. But with this dragon already here and IG getting prio mid, it looks like that they are not going to leave RNG any time to make some options. Yeah, both YSK and Breathe have TPs. We have the opportunity for a 5 on 5, but the positioning is actually going to be here for RNG, who are letting go of the priority in mid lane to try to get this. And Ming is not in a position to get a big pick early here and goes wide with the rocket grab. So now uh, Wei will go over the wall of death, as I've coined it, and IG will be in prime position for the dragon. But we keep seeing RNG find Pry in a different way. You can see on the minimap right now of Cry and making his way down there, actually pivoting into a a potential flank angle. The Rift Herald used as a distraction perfectly, actually. But IG, not going to take the bait. The Dragon did get started up. Tang Yuan, he's got that flank. And Wink, oh, he waits to pull the trigger just a little oh. too long. But Tianjin <laughs> is eliminated as all you needed was the lockdown. And Tianjin gets grabbed. Great, great setup by Tang Yuan for Ming to be able to pull that off. So now, now it's going to be Soul Point going over to RNG. It has been a very slow and steady game from both sides, but at least now that pressure is going to be there as we once again have another one of these souls. Yeah, Every single time. The, the thing is, it's been a slow game, but it's been very calculated from RNG. And I think leading off the fact is Wei and Ming really out on the map, and Ming particularly having such a presence on this Blitzcrank. The timings before the objectives, the timings of these grabs have been so big and he's really having a big impact. Yeah, he's he's really not just wasting them, right? He's he's very much living by the, the like the threat of the hook is also a force in of itself, right? If, if he just wastes that hook and, and that'll give IG an opportunity to engage, he can't afford that. So we're gonna go back to the replay, see here, Tang Yuan potentially started to make his way down, but then found the wraparound. They didn't know he was here, wasn't spotted on any vision. It's going to be the tangle barbs and the damage that sets up for Ming to land the hook. And as the engine, you just cannot expect that. I guess you yeah. could expect that. Once again, you a very could. common flank vision. angle, but still. <laughs> Talking about with the big angle, 
Uh, and a big glow up, it feels like, for this RNG roster, where they really needed some stability in mid lane. It feels like they finally found it, uh, especially now that LWX has entered the building, it feels like, finally in this series for RNG. He's had a very quiet season so far. We do need to start positioning some of this vision around the Baron pit, though, about 40 seconds for that. But the grab going to be dodged away from. And you can see there, right, the second that that hook went on cooldown, holds the engine and on, kind of turning around for a second. So that's why I mean. Not just throwing those out willy-nilly and, and, and trying to uh, respect the potential engage that can follow through. But you highlighted it. LWX also pretty big now with that opportunity. <laughs> these, these hooks are always like a pixel off from connecting. I'm ready. It's I'm so ready close. for the fight to break out. It's so I, I close sense every it. time. IG don't want it, though. They don't want that fight. They want to They want to not get hit by those. So IG want to invite RNG over for some afternoon tea, maybe play some chess. But RNG been working. Sandwich. RNG have been working their way to get into to one FC or UFC or Bella, whatever, whatever you know, fighting promotion you watch. <laughs> they've been working for it their whole lives. Uh -huh. They they're feeling like John Jones right now, and they're ready. Uh, they're ready to go. I like it. All right, we'll see if this fight does continue though, because. <laughs> Right now, uh, I do want to take a little bit of time to go over the intro of IG and how they win these fights because we've consistently highlighted RNG are looking for picks and they find it, they win the, the fights over and over again. Speaking of, we're going for that here, but you really have to circle back to the positioning conversation we were having for IG earlier. I, I feel like a big thing first is going to be the positions of some of their control wards, right? And really leaning into some of these angles within their own jungle. Like the initial one we saw where Ming is kind of hovering around now, having some control wards around there. IG have already done a decent job at getting them on the opposite side uh, of these jungle entrance points. But yeah, I mean, we're not even getting to see fights start, right? It is just yeah. a member of IG getting picked off every time in a place where usually you, you will have a Blitzcrank or a Thrash or, you know, any other type of champion that, that can look for those plays. So, Vision Control, step one, IG. We're also starting to get to the point where the uh, topside impact that we've been keeping an eye on all series long is going to start being a, an influence here. And look at the flank angles that Breathe can pull off. We haven't had any big TP plays, but they're both on second items. And that influence is going to be there in these next few fights, especially because we have that soul fight on a ticking time. Yeah, you you highlighting all, all the vision that can potentially set up for like Breathe to come out on a flag or something, but the observers a second ago did you show us that IG do have one sneaky ward around the Baron that uh, would either give them info or even potentially set up for YS Cam to come around if RNG tend to overgroup in mid. Doesn't seem like that's going to be the play just yet because Breathe has been happy pushing that, that side lane bot and now Tongyu and pushing top. IG are going to have to respond. Timer's coming up though, Lyric. As IG know where they need to be at early and they already have some control war vision down here. Ming and LWX are going to be the first of RNG to foray this way, but IG trying to make a play here. Yeah, and I want to highlight Tong Yuan uh, actually already sitting on two items with the Rocket Belt and the Storm Surge. Crying mm -hmm. not on his yet, but does have the Seekers at least, so could potentially buy enough time for his rotation of spells come up to be able to get out uh, if he does look to start the, the fight off for IG themselves. Ooh, nice Cam getting a nice little chunking done to him on the way down to this fight. And now we get the setup because the Dragon has spawned. IG doing a nice job, just playing so aggressively. So RNG can't find it. We've seen RNG every time they've started a fight off has been through Ming. <laughs> both, both of them just standing on the other side of the wall. Ming overextends his hand and goes down. You can't be grabbing Tianjin while he's with the rest of his team. And that just means IG start the dragon here. And RNG still at least posturing around. They don't have to. They're already on soul point themselves. Oh, oh. <laughs> Oh, and it's just about to go down. He does get that hostile takeover used to save him, and now Bree just finds himself caught out. Dragon goes over to IG, and they're showing some life here, Lyric. Now 39 seconds on the Aatrox. Do they just pivot over towards the Baron? We see Wink making his way up there now, but doesn't look like it. Just wanting to get some vision control set up and taking this turn in mid. So not feeling like they can do it fast enough just yet to really warrant any type of Baron start. Wei was waiting for an overextension there. It's so funny. I actually didn't know that two of the healing plants spawned right next to each other there with that Baron. <laughs> You're right. That's actually hilarious. Just a ton oh of sustain goodness. able to come out so from red much... side. Yeah, it's actually kind of crazy. Uh, but the, the conversation does then become like, 
if these ganks, if these big rocket grabs aren't coming to life for RNG, they do lose out on a lot of their potential. I, I do feel like this this one was a weird one in general, because you look at where both Wei and Tang Yuen are, they're nowhere near, I think especially your Nico who brings the verse, who can then bring Tango Barbs as well to lock Tian Gen in place even longer. Like, that could be something where that would make a difference make, uh, maker in a situation like that. And then RNG, they've never been afraid, uh, team afraid of like going into these opportunities for 5 because they know the Dragon's gonna be a useful tool and helping like lock IG into position. But it just gives on so much room to kite around that fight with the, the saving grace from Lincoln and YS Cam. Just wasn't worth it in the end. Yeah. We also see Kryon actually just picking up a yard sale here so far. He's looking for the Rabadons. He's got the Seeker's Arm Guard. He's got just the little brown bags on his feet, too. He's just uh, trying to make every little moment count here. And speaking of, YSKM going for a flank around mid lane. We'll be spotted out. Oh, oh it doesn't might matter because they have the improved Blast Cone. The all out not going to go through the wall, though. He does get that Chains of Corruption out of LWX. Yeah, I'm a little bit surprised throwing that one out so fast under the Blitzcrank. Uh, I feel like at that point, if LWX had just gotten past you with the, the knockup from the Blitzcrank being there, you, you kind of just hold off, walk away, and hope for a better target next time. Down. I love Ming and Wei setting up here. Ming had that Hex Flash available, and this is the deadly duo, it feels like, of this third game. It really does. Like, like you said, just the amount of threat that they've been able to put on. But IG just seemed completely fine with farming this out. I think now that the crying is so close to a death cap that uh, that's probably really the next break point that they're sitting on before they'll be looking for any sort of tussle. Oh, no. <laughs> he ah, tried seen so worse. hard to get the grobs. He's not going to get it. He's still pretty far off of, uh, of getting that completed rabbit on as well. So like 500 gold off. So we're going to be needing a little bit of time here. Time that uh, RNG will gladly take to try to clear out some more of this vision run. And I think that the thing for IG is that they aren't too afraid of a Baron coming out for RNG when you're running Lethality Varus, when you have this Nico, and then you just aren't going to be dealing enough damage to really pull it away from under IG's nose. IG is doing a nice job of cementing their presence around this top side to keep up this vision. And yeah, I mean, hell, even for IGs, as long as RNG doesn't, doesn't get on soul and you keeping the team that, that maintains that Dragon Control, that might be enough. So I wonder if it's an orange, RNG's head at this next Drake to do the whole Baron dance. To be like, aha, you go to yeah. Drake, we go to Baron, what's going to happen? And then we see which team folds first. That's the scariest thing. And like, that's what we highlighted in the draft with the Blitzcrank is it doesn't matter what has happened all game long. If it's, if say you're doing the Baron dance and one person overextends the wrong way to get a rocket grab, all of a sudden you can take Baron, you can take the other objectives, you can take the map. So it, it's always thinking about that for IG, their lack of range and how they're playing around. I do got to say though, Abyssal Mask and Rabadon just got finished up at the same time on the side for IG. So not only going to be shredding the MR, but now Krine's really going to be packing a punch. And this is why they feel so confident. Ooh, Ming going to go for Tianjin again. That just can't be the grab. Oh, Avenger Beans are down. Pop Blossom is in. They got oh. the combo to on and he's gone. That's Tianjin. Now the focus. Wise Cam goes on the breathe. Breathe by the back line. Oh my God. That's a world ending Aatrox right there. The Emperor's Divide is going to separate, and as IG run away, they are lacking two members. <laughs> there we go. Tonguent and Breathe shutting the IG bot lane out. Very reminiscent of the strengths that we saw from RNG in game one. But now they're going to start making their way over towards the bot half of the map, because Dragon is going to be up very soon. And now getting more items under their belt to, to try and keep this control missile is going to be rough for IG. God, that profane Hydra combo does so much. Oh! oh he wasn't was... even supposed to be there! No, makes it just in no. time. The TP flank, but I want to keep Rise of Tanyu in because he's really the one that finds the play. Reed is able to kind of work off the back of it and then follow it up really nicely. You can see Tianjin trying to lock him down with the flash. Oh, Doesn't we're matter. not stopping, baby. We're going right at it. And look who's on the back line again. Breathe as YS Cam's getting handled by Wei. It's a nice combo to Breathe. He gets taken out. And IG feeling a lot more confident now to step into the Dragon Pit. RNG have played their hand. And we just see every time RNG end up being so disconnected and IG being so on top of feeling back, but the Dragon's still going on. 
Look at the flank. He found him. He didn't get the flash, but he got the damage. And now Crying is right here, almost down. And RNG are looking for it. Tong Yuen's going for a flank now, too. And they just keep trading out who's going to go in. The dragon ends up going over to IG. And RNG not going to make a play on the back end here yet. As Ming wants to chase him down, but can't do it. Still, IG keep buying more and more time. That's all they've been trying to do. Now going to be able to pivot back up, get a reset out is Tong Yuen. I was hoping someone made a cheeky little mistake from the IG side. Really, heads up play from IG there. I think RNG had some angles, but feeling very hesitant to pull the trigger on them. Yeah, you know, I'm sure we're going to get a replay in just a minute, but it feels like it feels like we're seeing multiple fights where, you know, Ming will find a hook or an engage will come through, and then everyone just ends up so split, and it's so sad here, oh. not able to connect with it. That could have, I mean, that would have been a kill, right? And that could have changed uh, the fight and led RNG to be able to, to dissuade a dragon. Whoa! Dan Den going a little ham there. Doesn't want to fight over the scuttle, but actually wants to find the engage. As they're going on LWX, he just can't hit anything. Meanwhile, uh, Ming can't hit, hit anything either. And the rocket grab going to go wide. Tianzhen going to make it out, though, of the chains. And RNG, both teams just firing things left and right. Can't find anything. Yeah, neither team really feeling that solid now with the fight potentially breaking out, right? Crying and on this time don't have those same defensive tools. Uh, even Seekers was used up last time. Still, though, we're putting a lot on LWX's back to actually connect some damage. And I feel like time and time again, we are not seeing these Qs uh, hit onto their targets. In that last one, right, Wink's Guardian Shield even just able to eat that one up outright. And he just doesn't have the poke through a lot of the tankiness here. And IG, they're actually just going to start the bear. And we're going flip a Reno here. As the rocket grab goes wide, Way is on the flank of a century. They'll end up being spotted out. Oh, flank now going to come through from Tang Yuen. Baron is very low, but IG feeling a lot less confident. Wait, what has happened? Bailout comes through, but he's going to die within the fate's call. He does end up getting it out. Tangent goes wide. And IG, they need to be a lot more careful here as Ming is looking for a big rocket grab. Breathe and way. They are on the edges here as uh, now Cry is stepping up against his old team, doing some work, but IG are on the wrong side of town. Got to find a way to cross the tracks. Wei goes in. Wei finds crying, but the re-engage from Tianjin is pretty big to set it up and on smacks it down. As now Tong Yuen gets soloed out in the end, and it's a big fight from IG. And it's a big fight all the way around. The Baron goes over to Invictus Gaming. IG just clumping up, grouping together. Once the fight looked lost, was enough to, to make IG just, or RNG just lose their minds. I really don't know what to say about the second half of that fight, but kudos to IG, it led them to a Baron. What a play. And honestly, Crying coming up MVP in that one. As we'll take a look back at it, it all starts with this DB play on the wing. Like it starts off with once again, another member of IG kind of just walking, walking somewhere they don't need to walk, it gets punished. And then here, RNG are trying to, to threaten the pincer movement coming from both sides. But no one from RNG is really close enough to follow up on the engage. You've already hit on that IG's frontline does a great job of just absorbing the damage. People like, like Tong Yuen or LWX are able to dish out. Y scam singles out Tong Yuen, and the others just get to fight out that buy, which leads RNG to getting ran over. It just feels like we're seeing both teams making... They're making different mistakes, but they're making like like the same mistake over and over again for their side, right? One thing I've noticed so heavily in this series, though, is both teams utilizing the strengths of their comp composition very well, right? You have so much peel tool available for IG, and they're using that to split apart the fights very well. Why is Cam that focus on Tatang Yuen takes a lot of the sustained damage, or at least that catch potential, out of the furnace of RNG? I think if you continue seeing things like that, it is just going to be IG favor moving forward because they have a lot of the sustained damage in their back seat. I feel like you see both teams playing out like parts of their composition like incredibly <laughs> well. And then again, just like one or two parts where it's like, hey, we're, we're kind of overlooking this and, and making this mistake over and over again. We just got to calm down, chill out. But now I don't know if, if RNG can really ever kill YSKM or, or Tianjin. You pointed out a long time ago that like, it's not enough for Ming to just hook these guys anymore. If they yeah. hook these guys, they are just getting engaged on, and they are just going to lose. And sadly, we've seen that it feels too hard for members like Tang Yuan or LDBX to just brute force their way past some members on IG. So I think a lot just comes down to IG marking and, and breaking apart 
the like the diving core of RNG, right? The the way yeah. three Tang Yuen kind of trio. I love it. We just had so many ships in the night moments between these two junglers looking for the big engages, but it feels like the standard of engage is a lot easier to reach for Tianjin. He just has to throw his body in there and get a big Magnus Storm. We have Dragon up though. This is still soul for RNG, but IG are on the cusp of a third in a row. But Breed's nowhere close. Shuri is TP, but not going to be able to contend with this. Are just going to back off for now. <laughs> we're just going to be left in a stalemate. Somehow, RNG were up three dragons to nil. Now three apiece, Mizell. We're going, we're going into the late game territory. <laughs> we see that game. actually be a super big trend here in the LPL. I know Nymera was talking a lot about it at the uh, end of week number two as well. Was just the fact that we've gotten a lot slower in the LPL in terms yeah. of game time. And even you, you didn't even realize we had gone past 40 minutes for last game. So it's just like, it, it feels so weird to see LPL games going this long. But then we get these chaotic last minute fights. And the fact that we do have a pretty much a five minute timer until there's a guaranteed fight around Dragon. I gotta be honest, like part of it could also be that I have found myself casting many days where, you know, a BLG have been playing a whoever or a top esports have been playing a lower. T you know, you know, myself, those games still do go by incredibly fast. But it yeah. really only feels like those games. I feel like our whole like upper middle to lower middle of the pack teams all just feel like they could like interchange games with each other left and right. And mm. yeah, it doesn't feel like there's a big difference. I'm kind of hoping that changes a little bit once we get back from the new year break, but also not really knowing the result of any of the series is, has its own charms. <laughs> it doesn't. <laughs> yeah, I guess so. It doesn't charge. So it uh, I do want to check in, though. We got to get some brass tacks out of the way. We got four items completed there for on. We got four items for LWX. I know we've put a lot of focus on mid laners, on YSKM and Breathe. These two guys are going to be monumental in their positioning and how they approach the next fights. And I just really want to highlight on on specifically now having that GA because RNG's comp is very like cooldown burst reliant, right? Like Nico throwing out one rotation yeah. of spells, Varus doing the same. So it's gonna be hard. Even if you even if you manage to find a way to take out on, unless Breed is literally just sitting right on top of his corpse, he, he'll just be able to get up, you know, back away, and probably be able to keep dishing out more damage than RNG's carries could. Uh, for their side, we do have a Guardian Angel on Breathe now, but we've just seen nice. over and over again him getting kited by this Callista Renata. Gonna be looking forward to that GA for sure. Uh, try to save his life, get some backup from the team, but it does mean that uh, we're starting to get on in builds, and I, I do like that IG are looking for something in RNG's jump. <laughs> Both of them uh, backing next to each other, you know, old teammates as it were, but uh, TP right back, and IG starting to put up the pressure here. Baron spawning in about 50 seconds. IG just gonna maintain pressure for now. Burden barrier on Crying, so just trying to make his way to his next pain point. And I love that Tianjin just keeps like hovering around walls, maybe just expecting for Ming to, to check and, and throw out another grab, but he is not falling for that anymore. Yeah, I think if you see a big metal horse, no rocket grab. That's an easy combination. Or if you see That's nothing at all, don't rocket grab. Or if grab, you see like... nothing, okay, I, yeah, yeah, good, good, good call, good call. Just need the caveat there, need the caveat. I do think that RNG are going to be in a bit of a weird spot here, though. Unless they try to go for giant flank maneuvers. They might. Things are coming out. Look at Tying you in on the minimap. He's, he's going he's the full so distance. Far. He spotted out on a ward. Like, IG just immediately pull up. Yeah, I'm not able to do I do respect the effort, though. Uh, don't really lose anything for it. And IG are just being such a menace by not letting RNG into their own jungle. Uh, we really are looking at Tang Yuen for that play, and he's not giving up. He's still staying in the enemy jungle. <laughs> hey, you stay there long enough, you become one with the bush. Uh, he will not be spotted out there in the end by the uh, blue trinkets. Double blue trinkets being used by IG. They realize... Tong Yuen is missing. He's somewhere on the map, and he's being sneaky. Oh, Breathe has a position oh, as well. Oh, my God. No way. IG have just put themselves in a bear trap, and we're just waiting as the seconds go by for it to close. As you hear the tick, tick, here it comes as IG can't get their foot caught in the trap. Wei is now caught in his own trap a little bit, but they've gotten a triple pincer as a pop blossom. There it goes. 
has snapped right onto the ankle of IG, but they're fighting right back. They're not letting this one go. Breathe is about crying. Breathe has gotten a big one, but a triple kill has gone on, and all five members of RNG fall to their own bait and end up on the post mantle of IG. And why SKM and TNGen do so much there? They're distracting all the other members of RNG, and now with these death timers, they're gonna be able to start breaking down this base. The question becomes, are IG the real deal? Maybe they haven't had the hardest competition so far, but they're gonna end their first spree in a bang fashion as the last series before Chinese New Year, IG is looking to put themselves at a 4-1 scoreline and in wonderful fashion as well. YSKM showing up on and weak being stable and a wonderful 2-1 series from Invictus Gaming. IG showing up strong. You already pointed out, right? Now sitting at 4-1 in the standings to be able to move through uh, the, 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 the kind of rest of the LPL, which is great because during that time, I was actually looking at who they play when they come back from break is BLG. So build up all the confidence you can right now, boys. You're setting yourselves up from the rest of the pack. And I got to say, Mazel, for me, it's, it's a little bit different than how it was last year. I didn't really buy into the IG hype last year just because you could so clearly see the meta dependence of the 